I got my start in the adult film industry by answering ad in a Southern California newspaper. The ad said, figure models wanted 500 to 5,000 per day. Now, I'm five foot two, and figure models, I figured, <laughs> were probably nudes. And I, I was raised in a household that we had playboys lying around. It was no big deal. Sex wasn't in your face by any means, but it wasn't something to be shamed or feel bad about. Uh, so I answered the ad. I went in. I shot for Penthouse the next day. I posed for every major men's magazine that's out there over the next three months. And consistently, my agent kept saying, we want you to do commercial. And initially, I thought commercial was toothpaste, you know, pearl drops, yay, I'll do it. I found out that it meant adult films. And I, I, I said, you know, I, I don't think I'm that kind of a girl. I had a negative stereotype image, as a lot of people did, about the industry at that time. This is when it was the raincoat crowd and movies were only shown in theaters. And the girls who did them in my head were not nice girls. And there was a day that I met a beautiful, intelligent, articulate woman in my agent's office. And I took her to lunch. I asked her about the industry, how she felt about it, what her rules were. She gave me all of her thoughts and opinions. I went back and I said, all right, I'll do it. But I want cast approval. I want script approval. I want this much per scene. And I had all of these, this list of rules. My agent was on the floor hysterically laughing. He said, she's a big star. You can't do that. And I said, fine, then I won't do it. Several weeks later, uh, a woman by the name of Svetlana Marsh and her husband, David. Svetlana was the big, tall blonde on the gong show with Chuck Barris that did the gong. She and her husband were producing their first adult film. They wanted someone who had never been seen on film before, someone fresh. And uh, they agreed to all my terms. I had my first leading role in a movie. I did two films back to back on the island of Kauai. We had a quarter of a million dollar budget. We had a cast and crew of 50. Everyone flew to the island and it, it was magical. It was amazing. I, I worked with Jerry Butler along with six other amazing women. And I found that it was a place that I, that I was comfortable. And I, I, I enjoyed myself. The most difficult part about it, funny enough, was dialogue. I shot a sex scene first. I was fine with that. And then I had to talk. And I'm supposed to be running along this path. And the guy with the boom is running next to me with the microphone hanging over my head. And every time I went to say my line of dialogue, I couldn't talk. I could not get the dialogue out. It was a nightmare. We ended up not being able to finish the scene that day and had to reshoot the next day. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have Jerry Butler on the set, who was a trained actor, and taught me some tricks and helped me to get, get over my, my fear of the, the microphone and talking. And there I was. I stayed in it for two years and three months. You know, I'm, I'm an old school girl. One of the reasons that I enjoyed making adult, fil adult films so much was not just the sex. These were directors who had 120 page scripts, directors who wanted to make a real movie. They wanted to make body heat with the sex. So they, I mean, some of the movies I, I, I appeared in were, in my opinion, amazing. You know, New Wave Hookers, Trashy Lady, The Grafenberg Spot, Girls on Fire, and they, so I, I got to act, I got to perform, and because I had the, the luxury of choosing my, my partners, it was all good. And back then it was a very small industry. There were 50 of us. We hung out before we filmed, while we filmed, after we filmed, and I loved it. We had premieres, we had red carpets, we had, uh, I, I was the first contract girl. Once we went from film to video becoming popular, I was the first girl that signed an exclusive contract with Vivid Video, but I also had in my contract the ability to still shoot on 35 millimeter. I didn't want to give that up. The changes over the, the last 30, 32 years have been incredible with the internet and digital and you know everybody who's got a, a, a camera can make a, make a film and they do and cam, models doing cam shows. Um, I would not be in the industry today, and I wouldn't recommend that anybody else get in it today. It's not the same as it was. Uh, there's not the quality of people behind the camera that there used to be. Don't get me wrong, there are good people. But 
when I got into it, it was illegal. There was no fame. There was no fortune. Those of us who did it, did it because we wanted to. And now young women and men grow up watching adult films, watching porn, and wanting to be the next Jenna Jameson, the next Ginger Lynn, the, the next whatever. And there will never be another big name. The market is too inundated and, and, and just flooded with transient performers, and a lot of them get into it for the wrong reasons. This is an industry that if your head's not in the right place, you're fucked. I mean, it, you're just done. You know, it's, it's very, very intimate, and you need to be in it for the right reasons, and you need to like what you're doing. I personally believe that the laws, I think that you should have to be 21 in order to make an adult film. I don't think that you're mentally developed enough and have the the foresight to realize what it will do to your future. Um, you don't have to worry, like being Ginger Lynn is a little different. You know, I've crossed over into mainstream and I'm recognizable on many, many levels. The girls today, they do it and everybody in their hometown knows, everybody knows here, but then they're forgotten in a little bit. They're in it for six months and, and they're not going to be in a position that we were back then. I haven't spoken to Charlie in many, many years. Charlie was my very first true love. He, it was the first time I was in love. I had loved before, but Charlie was definitely the, the first man that I was in love with. And our relationship went off and on for, well, on for nonstop for the first two years and then off and on again for another three. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Charlie. He's the man that I knew when we dated was amazing. He was kind. He was compassionate. He was loving. He was brilliant. He's, he's just a, an amazing man and, and he will always have a place in my heart. Always. I, I've been lucky in my career. I, I started in the adult industry, went on to B movies, uh, mainstream television, small roles in A movies, and it, it's kind of been continuous. I've worked more than, than most actors ever will. Rob came along and changed everything. Rob opened me up to a whole new group of people that had never seen me before. There are people that, that I meet at conventions that don't know anything about my adult career. Working with Rob was, has been a, some of my best experiences on mainstream sets. I was petrified to work with Rob. I really was. I thought, he's going to be this rock and roll guy. He's going to be a hard ass. He's going to be, uh, you know, arrogant. And uh, you know, I just, I, I was petrified. Nicest guy I've ever met. Wonderful director. Amazing to work with. He really works with his actors. Tells you what he wants. You've got your script. And then there's, there's some leeway. There's Rob lets you go. Uh, when I did The Devil's Rejects, working with Sid, could have been a very uncomfortable situation. Sid was, was as professional as can be. We clicked, we hit it off. Fabulous scene. Rob came to, uh, came to me again and uh, offered me a role in The Lords of Salem. Unfortunately, for personal reasons, I was unable to do it. Fast forward a few more years and 31 came along. And it, it amazes me. I'm thrilled about it. I still don't quite know why. But for some reason, Rob has continued to put me in his films. You know, there's something about my work that he must appreciate. And uh, so he cast me in 31. It's the first film that I've ever done where I have a non disclosure agreement. And I like to talk. <laughs> you know, I like to tell stories, and it's so hard for me. It's so difficult to keep my mouth shut. You know, there's very little I can tell you about it. I can say that when I read the script, one of the few scripts that, that I'm going through it, I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. There were a lot of oh, no's, and I get goosebumps just thinking about it, and um, it's, it's intense. It's true Rob Zombie. Much of the film was fan-funded, and that enabled Rob to do what he wanted to do. There's not a studio saying, you can't do this and you can't do that. Um, I'm, I don't know if this is true or not, but I see this as, as Rob's baby. I mean, he really was 
so detailed in everything that he did on this film, from the casting to the script to locations and wardrobe and makeup and uh, the reality that's there and the grit and the dirt and the dark and the nasty and the wrong. Uh, my character is Cherry Bomb. I play uh, Doomhead, which is Richard Brake. He is the leading man. I play his girlfriend. And that's as much as I can tell you. <laughs> we do have a release date of September 16th. And I cannot wait. I've also heard, I read something that Rob posted recently that the trailer should be out very soon. It's all been a big secret. Mm -hmm.